Welcome to What is Going Om for new thought from the edge of Om. Each week on Om Times flagship radio show, veteran broadcaster, author, and media consultant Sandy Sedgbeer conducts thought provoking interviews with inspirational authors, artists, musicians, scientists, speakers, and filmmakers who are working at the point where spirituality and science meet consciousness at the very edge of Om. Here is your host, Sandy Sedgbeer. Hello. With so much sad, negative news filling the headlines, it's not always easy to remember who we are and the bigger picture of humanity's true pur purpose and potential. Distraction can be a powerful weapon in the hands of those with vested interests in fomenting fear, anxiety, and destabilization. But if you're more interested in looking behind the distraction curtain, stay tuned. Joining me today to discuss what some would rather we didn't know about our human potential, our infinite multidimensional nature, and our power to co-create the world we all want to see is one of, if not the most trusted and widely viewed astrologer of our time, Pam Gregory. Pam, welcome back to the show. Oh, bless you, Sandy. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. Really a joyful to be here with you again. Likewise. You have... You and Nancy Rebecca have really set the internet light of late. It is so interesting to watch all the comments and all of the people who are now coming out and admitting that they too have been seeing and feeling blue beings for a long time. So did you expect this? Uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yes, I expected it in terms of I knew there was going to be a lot about the light that was going to come come at this time because the light I, I always said over the last few years and you can replay some of the videos that I thought it wasn't going to take years and years and years of linear time to solve all the problems we have in the world it'd be something to do with the light but I never know with astrology the specific events you know the specific experiences so and the, the, to excuse the pun that whole connection with Nancy came out of the blue <laughs> because she'd, um, she'd written to me about I don't know three months ago very kindly to say I can see a lot of blue light around you and she wasn't asking for anything and I wrote back and said gosh that's so lovely and kind thank you and I just kind of had a an instinct a nudge to write to her again at the beginning of of November to say Nancy you know I'd really like to understand more about the blue light and 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 to understand where you're coming from and at the time she readily admit she only had a following of a few hundred people but having spoken to her that afternoon and realizing what a huge heart she was you know she she was a hospice nurse and and how genuine she is we had a conversation mm. and I said look I'd love to make this more public because I think it's going to help a lot of people so we we did the video the next day which just caught the first of these three waves of blue light so you know this is how the universe works isn't it to get the timing to get divine timing but literally hundreds and hundreds of people have written to Nancy and I it's been on top of the normal 2,000 or so emails and messages I get a day because people are just kind of sobbing in their kitchen to say I've kept this quiet for for decades because I'm I'm in a Catholic family or my friends would think I was crazy but they're now given validation to step out into the light and say, yeah, this is happening to me too. And so this becomes a, I mean, th those two videos are, you know, virtually going viral with, yes. the, with the, the validation for people. And therefore it's becoming much more of a widespread movement of a revolution of love, as Dr. Jude Caravan would say. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what else is happening? As you said, the synchronicities are coming in thick and fast. I noticed a couple of weeks ago, and I think I sent you a link to a piece that CNN had reported about um, a mysterious, extremely rare, ultra high energy particle or cosmic ray observed in Utah, which came from beyond the Milky Way galaxy. Now, when I checked into that further, in fact, that was actually detected in May of, I think it was 2021, but the information was not released until November the 24th, which was one day before the third. <laughs> 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 
So how's that for synchronicity? It's wild. It's absolutely wild. And, and time is very much beginning to warp as well. Saturn in yes. Pisces, dissolution of linear time. It's going to warp. It's speeding up. Um, you know, we have lapses in time. That's going to happen more and more as we as we shift more towards the, the light body. So it's, yes. you know, it's yeah. very exciting. And what's interesting about that particular mysterious ray, um, there was one in 1991 and the, everybody called it the Oh My God Particle. <laughs> yes, well, indeed. In the, this is divinity in, in action. And um, yes. we are going to get an awful lot of news about the out there. And by the out there, I mean the cosmos, the galaxies, the galactic beings. And we are, you know, as you well know, Sandy, we are galactic beings as well. We're going to be meeting our families again, our galactic families. There's going to be a lot of out there in terms of space travel. Um, our, our method of air travel, I think, is going to be completely revolutionized in the next few years. But I can talk more about that as we get into it. But it's going to just know there's going to be a lot of out there happening because of yes. the well, all the billionaires are jumping on the uh, let's send rockets to Mars and let's colonise Mars um, platform, aren't they? Indeed. And as long as this is done with, with altruism in mind and for the highest good of all, then fantastic. If it's not, um, you know, our timelines are going to be very self-selecting, Sandy. Um, and I think they're two broad timelines that you could categorize in various ways. Um, one of the ways you could categorize them is, is to say, are we acting as service to self or service to others? Yes. Because that's going to be one of the big divides of timeline uh, going forward. So nobody forces you onto any timeline. You self-select them depending on your frequency. Mm, yeah. And I think also as far as coincidence or synchronicity is occurring, I have noticed in the last couple of years more and more credentialed people, cosmologists, uh, you know, physicists, um, scientists are feeling comfortable about sharing what they know about consciousness. Yes, it's... Mm. Absolutely. And, and consciousness becomes eventually an inescapable ingredient of, of quantum physics. You, you can't get away from that. And I'm seeing more and more parallels between Buddhism and quantum physics with consciousness smack bang in the middle um, mm. to link the two. And, and I am deep down rabbit holes right now. In fact, I had a bit of a download about 10 minutes before we hopped on here, Sandy, and I'm I'm kind of deeply into, as you know, what is the question that's always driven all of my work for years and years is how do we create our reality? Because once we understand that, we become incredibly empowered co-creators in our world as opposed to victim consciousness being buffeted by the nightly news when we just leak and scatter our power so this is something i'm 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 fierce about you know i have a laser kind of laser grip on that question and so that's leading me down some very interesting rabbit holes right now can you share any of those downloads yet yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it was literally about about sort of 10 minutes before i came on and i don't know if this term has been used before i didn't have enough time to check on the internet whether anyone else has used this term but it suddenly came to me because so often people say, oh, what good is this, you know, woo woo woolly stuff do? You're, you're sitting meditating or you're sending love. You know, what, what good is that? That's all invisible and so abstract. And how do you prove that's doing anything? Well, there's 10 tons of proof. But apart from that, um, the term that came to me was quantum activism. Ah. Yes. So I don't know if anyone else has used that, but quantum activism, and I will defer to anyone who's already thought of that, but, it, you know, it, love isn't weak. Love is a fire. It's the highest vibration in the universe that, that, that can change things. I mean, I've been brought to tears, actually, this afternoon because several people have been right, well, many people write to me about the projects they're starting up across the world two sisters wrote to me this afternoon because they have a particular project happening in in spain and they got inspired with my hashtag look what love built and they're sort of hacking out from wild land a community for the greater good of all and it just it just brought me to tears because they were inspired by 
look what love built as opposed to sort of moaning and groaning about the state of the world and at this time in history we have incarnated we as a group of people had have, have chosen to incarnate because we're the cycle breakers we're the trailblazers we're the bridge builders of new earth and it's going so fast as you and i were just saying sandy and you know nothing is more important than us raising our consciousness because the the universe is, as professor robert temple has talked about is one one consciousness it's interconnected it's one consciousness so therefore if we can raise our individual consciousness by definition because we're fractals of that yes. we have to raise the collective consciousness Absolutely. and that is the way we get beyond the hamster wave the hamster wheel of horrors of the war the death the disease the poverty the misery we've got to do you know some years ago a couple of years ago i was talking about an analogy when before I went off traveling on my own through India and Nepal for several months, I did a very basic martial arts course. And in this martial arts course, we had to, and I'm just a little five foot two, eight stone person. We were being taught to break a builder's plank, which was about two inches thick. I don't know if I've talked about this before. And if you just focused on the plank, the obstacle, you really hurt your hand. But the, the, we were taught to focus to where you want to get to, focus beneath the plank, six inches beneath the plank where your hand is going to end up. And you know, it was incredibly easy to break a builder's plank if you did that. So I suddenly, you know, I hadn't suddenly turned into Hercules in those moments. I just simply shifted my mental perspective. Yeah. So focus on where we want to get to. And for people who say, well, I don't know if I'm changing my consciousness or my frequency. You know, what's the evidence for that? Well, just look in your life and say, in the last little while, have your friends, your network of friends changed? Has the media that you're consuming changed? Because actually, even in the last week, people I would listen to as I was cleaning my teeth or making supper or whatever, I just don't want to listen anymore. I've, I've kind of moved on to something else. And this is happening very quickly. And more and more, um, I think we, we want to turn inwards. We want to find that place of stillness and peace from where we know we create our reality. And, and if you just do this as an experiment in your own life, do it as a really simple experiment. If you say, have a, a challenging relationship or job circumstance or whatever it is whatever it is do it as an experiment that you you send love to that situation and also do something like the Ho'oponopono Hawaiian forgiveness prayer which yeah. is you know you can find online you can learn in five yeah. minutes it's really simple I have literally laughed out loud at the effect that has had in terms of what I thought was an intractable situation that you think, I can't logic my way out of this. So I'm going to roll the Ho'oponopono prayer around my, my head like a mantra and direct it to the person, the circumstance, the situation. And literally, if you do it enough, it, it's just incredible how it dissolves that stuck situation. And I think, and I certainly feel, and I know many people do, I will let you speak in a moment, Sandy, but I think many people do that I'm, when, I, for instance, a few years ago when I started writing my newsletters, I was almost obsessed by current affairs, what's happening out there, what's happening in the world. So a lot of my kind of let's review the previous month and get the proof of the pudding of all the astrology to prove how astrology is manifesting in every moment. I was very obsessed and, and precise about that. Now I couldn't care, well, not to say I couldn't care less because I, I care enormously about the horrors in the world, but I know I'm not going to solve them with an out there focus. I'm going to mm. solve them with an in here focus and so um it's not to say that you're becoming a hermit but you're kind of becoming more aware of the core the center the, the ignition point of how you create your reality yeah so i just don't want to write about that 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 stuff I, I, what i'm interested in how can we empower ourselves as better co-creators with, with with love as our force Absolutely, there's only one of us. 
You know, there's well, only one of us. That's a crazy thing. I know it's really hard to get your head around. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's what the sages and I love what you said about quantum activism and that you got it as a download. I tell you who, the only other person I've heard say that is um, Amit Goswami, the theoretical physicist. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Quantum yes. activism, yeah. Yes. So I, I, I need to become. Yes, I must credit him. And, I, you know, I saw that in What the Bleep 100 years ago. Um, yes, but it's a fantastic term. Thank you for that, Sandy. Yeah. And the other thing is, I mean, you were saying that people are contacting you and saying, well, how would I know if my consciousness has changed? You know, Jude Cohen says consciousness is not what we have. It's what we are. Yeah. Pure consciousness. That's it. So how would you know if that's changed? Just look within. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And more and more, I just think we are we are pure light. Yes. Because physicists know that we are um, sort of 99.9999 recurring to about 10 nines empty space. You know, yes. we're a tiny piece of matter, but we've got this this constant illusion, this very persistent, as Einstein would say, illusion of, of tangibility and solidity. And I tell you something you said about, you know, blue, the colour blue. I mean, it's a frequency, all colours are frequency. I remember asking somebody who has been seeing blue be beings for a long time, you know, what is the significance of blue? And she said, it's a frequency of who we are. So if that is a frequency of who we are, and just on my news feed today was a piece that I couldn't read fully because I didn't subscribe all the way to all of the things on my news feed that said blue light kills every virus known to man. Why do we not have more blue light around us? Indeed. Well, if we are blue light, and I really do believe we are, you know, that's the frequency that we can emit then we can kill viruses and I, I have no doubt about that so just by raising mm. our frequency and i know certainly the ultraviolet light will will sterilize things yes. um very powerfully but it's all about it's it's all about the frequency Every, it, everything is about the frequency, frequency you know the the energy the light it's all about that mm. We're going to develop yeah. a new vocabulary, a new understanding of, of what this universe and what we are made of, I think, going forwards. Yeah. The other thing that we're seeing a lot of, and it's interesting how you see it filter into the consciousness, um, is the um, the phrase, the new human. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everybody is talking about the new human suddenly, yeah. and this is who we are becoming. And um, certainly some of the people I know who are working with a lot of the uh, autistic, nonverbal population say they are the new human. They are the prototype for the new human. And their frequency is what is different about them. And that's why they find it hard to interact on this 3D plane. Yeah, and the children are remarkable. Their their understanding, um, their understanding of the galaxy and science. It's just, it, it, how did they, how did they learn all of that at such a young age? I mean, and, mm -hmm. and youth will 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 represent leadership going forwards, so not in this old fashioned top down telling us what to do. Um, simply by being visionaries and progressives and innovators, people will automatically want to group around them. I mean, I've often referred to. Uh, that wonderful chap called Boyan Slat, who is, I think, an Eastern European chap, and he has got this non-profit um, organization called Ocean Cleanup. Um, so he's got volunteers all over the world, and he's developed really what is essentially, as I understand, a very simple kind of scoopy thing, <laughs> and he is, is dedicated to cleaning up 99% of the floating plastic pollution in all of our oceans and seas. I mean, how incredible is that? A young, so he's not even making money from this, but he just wants to help the earth, and so do all the young people gathering around him. I mean, that's how it's going to work in in future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When um, you and I first spoke um, on air a few years ago, um, we talked about um, something that Jim Self had said to me a long time ago, which was that we are going to find out 
much more about astrology and what it can do for us than anybody has ever thought. And that is really beginning to emerge now. With what you said earlier, you know, thinking about you thought it was going to be light that was going to move things forward. Is astrology pointing to anything else? It's definitely pointing to um, each of the, it, this is almost going back to the, you know, Pythagorean harmony of the spheres, because I think what is going to be discovered is that every orbiting body has a particular frequency and they are creating music um, out there in the cosmos. And at the moment of our birth, it's almost like our birth chart is a symphony for us that is created by the planetary frequencies in that particular unique geometry at the moment of our birth that will never be repeated in history again. That's why we're each of us so special. But what, you know, with the, the um, sort of longer range telescopes, we're discovering this whole new level of planets called the Kuiper Belt objects, the dwarf planets. And the symbolism of those, that's really representing a higher level of consciousness for us, which is less to do with our individual personalities and more to do with this collective frequency of love coming forwards. And that's why I'm so excited by those, because they represent the new frontier for humanity. And although they're very slow moving, so, you know, with a fast moving planet, you can get a lot of information from an individual's chart in a short period of time, as it were, because Jupiter moves quickly, Mars moves quickly. But the Kuiper Belt objects, because mostly they, their orbit is about 300 years, it takes us longer to get information. But nevertheless, people who have these dwarf planets conjunct their planets or angles prominently are really stepping forwards in remarkable ways to break the mold of what we've known and what we've had. And that becomes incredibly exciting, I think. So mm. it is happening very, very fast. Yeah. And it's all about the planets, about the frequency. Yeah. I love what you said about the music because what that means is we are just one wonderful orchestra. Yeah. Yeah. Pythagoras was right. Mm. And that will I, I don't know if I ever told you, but I once came across a, a book about astrology written by an engineer. And um, it was a very interesting book. And he said something, he met a man who said that, give me your chart and I will play it for you. And okay. the man did. And um, I've always loved uh, Jupiter from Holt's Planet Suite. Yes. Jupiter leads my chart. <laughs> um, and I've often wondered whether there's a connection there, you know, knowing that somebody could literally play your chart. I wonder how the body would react to that. It would probably create much more um, coherence, I would guess, in your system. And at the end of the day, you know, we know from, say, Dr. Joe Dispenza's work, it's all about coherence. The more coherent our energy can be, the more positively we'll, we will create our own health, but that will also affect the uh, the collective field as well. So coherence is where it's at. Incoherence is where you've got kind of interference on the television set, nothing's quite connecting properly. Um, coherence is when it flows beautifully, as music, as you say, Sandy. Yeah. So yeah, beautiful. I think this is all to be discovered in a bigger way. Well, I think somebody needs to come forward now, a good musician who can tell us how we can have our charts played for ourselves. Fabulous. Yeah, well, that's a real invitation. I haven't heard of anyone personally who's done that yet. Maybe they have. But yes, that's a real invitation out to the world. I do know musicians who are playing people's DNA. Wow. Creating music from the DNA. That then, is already happening. Yeah. And that's changing so fast as well as, as we are remembering some of our original strands of DNA. That's what's mm -hmm. taking us back to some in incredible gifts and skills that we had in, in ancient times that are coming online very fast, I think. Yes. Yeah. And I remember Cryon saying about 10 years ago that with all of the photons of light coming onto the planet, that the strands of the DNA that we are currently not using were going to be activated. Fabulous. Well, that is happening right now. I mean, yeah. sensitive yeah. people can actually feel that. Um, they write about it on social media. But I think everybody is, is experiencing a higher degree of psychic sensitivity. And that will continue to grow very quickly in the coming months and years. Mm. You've been um, involved in astrology for 45 years. So your 
understanding of it and what it can do must have really evolved over that period. But are you finding that your understanding is escalating now? Yeah, it's really interesting, Sandy. And that's a great question. And I, I felt I felt that very strongly recently that um, the astrology that I've I've worked with for so many decades, you know, with the bread and butter planets, um, I want to go beyond it. And I haven't quite crystallized or can't quite articulate where that's going to take me. That I will always use astrology as my language, but I want to go beyond it because beyond it because there's still this sense with people of what are the planets doing to us? It's fated. Um, you know, I come to an astrologer because I'm anxious and worried about what Mars, Saturn, in particular, or Pluto is doing to me. Well, these are this is just modeling clay for you to create your reality. So we've got to turn that whole thing around from from it being fated to you stepping into playing a mag your unique sheet of music absolutely magnificently. So I'm trying to go beyond it in a way that I haven't fully grasped yet. I'm kind of slightly in limbo with this at the moment, but I know it's linked to the dwarf planets. I know it's linked to quantum physics. And to some extent, I think it's linked to Buddhism and the simplicity of it. Because I often call myself, you know, people write to me and say, gosh, what's your ritual or what's your ceremony? Well, it's it's actually throwing sticks in the in the stream for my neighbor's dog where all the dragonflies are. You know, I'm a proud bumpkin. And and <laughs> possibly it's that simple. And I say that, you know, with, with pride because I think it could be the simplicity that makes anything I say reasonably easy for people and reasonably accessible. It's yeah. it, it, try and make it not complicated because then it's not really useful. Mm, yeah. The other thing that I find really interesting is that uh, astrology, you know, when they find a new planet, somebody names that and they tend to come up with something that actually really does have something to do with the impact. But they don't know that. So yeah, again and again and again, we're seeing this this um, sharing of information in very subtle ways. It's remarkable. And another great question, Sandy, because we're, we're very lucky to have an astronomer. I think he's based in um, Arizona, who has discovered a lot of these dwarf planets. His name is Mike Brown. And luckily, he knows a lot about mythology. And he's um, very kind in, to, to astrologers because he always gets the exact time of his, his discovery through the telescope, the time, the date, the place. And he gives it a name. And the name he gives it, the, the, the mythology, you know, surprisingly enough, because it always works out this way with astrology, is how it tends to manifest um, in people's charts and people's lives. And of course, then we've got the discovery chart to work with, and then we can put it in people's birth charts and see how it's playing out, etc. But we're very lucky to have Mike Brown, because he, he understands a lot about mythology. And then you can probably look back and say, ah, yes, we could have predicted this. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, God, it's, it's so we are, it's going to become increasingly multidimensional. You know, yes. the, the astrology is no longer going to be 3D. As we move into 2024, almost out of the traps, and particularly, I would say, from May onwards, it's going to become much more multidimensional. Mm. Well, we're going to hold it right there on that note, be, take a short break, and we're going to talk about 2024 and how different it's going to be from 2023 after the break. You're listening to What Is Going On. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer and my guest today is astrologer Pam Gregory. And we're talking about astrology in the context of our spiritual journey and the latest, latest astrological and cosmological discoveries that are expanding our view of our life on Earth. We'll be back with more from Pam after the break. Om Times TV. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach. Om Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. 
Through our produced shows, OM Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an OM Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on OM Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive OM Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. OM Times, open yourself to the possibilities. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of OM Times flagship radio show, What is Going On? And as an author, editor, and 13 times book judge, who's read thousands of books and interviewed hundreds of authors, I'm constantly asked, what's really worth reading and what's not? So I created the No BS Spiritual Book Club to help you save time and money by picking the brains of discerning names who have walked this path before you. There's no catch, no fees and no BS, just an ever-growing library of 10 best spiritual book lists from some of your favourite authors and teachers, plus free book excerpts, audios and video interviews with people like Don Miguel Ruiz Jr., David G., Lee Harris, Mark Nepo and more. From well-known classics to hidden gems you've never heard of, it's the only no BS guide to the best spiritual books to enlighten your journey of self-discovery. So why not join the club, get inspired and save money at the no BS spiritual book club.com. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back. Pam, it's no secret that the world is in a parlous state. We're all feeling it. Many people who've been on a spiritual path for several decades are feeling rather jaded, as if all of their work has come to nothing. Um, but astrology is something that is becoming very clear that it can support us in moving forward, and it can actually help remind us that it's not all for nothing, that you know we can rise above all of the noise that's out there if we use astrology at the right time. I mean, it's right there for us to use, isn't it? Absolutely. And yeah, th thank you for that, Sandy, because I think so much that is good is, is, is going on in the world, so much that's born of love that we don't necessarily hear about because these people aren't necessarily loud and shouty and banging mm -hmm. a drum. They're, they're very loving people. They live, they live in their hearts. They're quietly going around community work, charity work, philanthropic work, and doing amazing things in the world. I mean, people write to me all day, and not just me, obviously. Um, people are, are, are writing to, to other people out there on social media all day long, saying, this is what I'm doing. I'm making a difference in the world. I'm not just here to make a living. I'm here to make a difference. And that sense of altruism and philanthropy will grow rapidly in 2024, because we will be I've said this for the last year or so, but we, we will just lose interest in territorial materialism of this is mine and I want to invest to make a profit. We couldn't care less. The whole financial system is going to change so much anyway. We will want to come together. And I think what COVID did was really create this yearning to connect to other human beings, this yeah. yearning just to connect. And, you know, I'm in a big group locally here. And we are all different ages, backgrounds, job status, doesn't matter. We are all humanity coming together, you know, hugging, laughing, sharing. What can we do to make this world a better place? And every single one of us is doing something creative to make this world a better place. You know, so there may be carpenters. I'm an astrologer. We're lots of healers in the group. So a lot is going on that we don't necessarily, we absolutely do not see on the nightly news. That's the last thing we're going to see on the nightly news. Yes, absolutely. And I think that um, people are looking for more meaning too. I mean, I'm seeing so many people turn their backs on the old, uh, you know, I, I've got to make success and earn lots of money and just wanting to do things that are meaningful and live on less. 
but be be happier for it. And in fact, yeah, these are really good points, Sandy, because I think even the word career, I, I don't know what to do with that word anymore. It's kind of, yes, your calling or your work in the world. And yeah. And all those things that seemed important in the 70s and 80s and buying stuff and having a big title because that's what we were programmed to do. It just feels so hollow and empty. Um, people are really changing their value system. Uranus and Taurus, they're changing their value system very rapidly. And um, and that's a wonderful thing. We're going to see that big, big, big time as we move through 2024 and beyond. There's a very different energy coming in in 2024. Tell us about, I mean, I know because reading your newsletter and listening to some of your broadcasts and presentations that you've done, that there are going to be certain times throughout the coming year when the astrology is absolutely perfect for us doing something new or taking care of ourselves or, you know, um, advancing our consciousness in some way, taking up some spiritual activity, etc. So tell us about some of those opportunities that await us next year. Yes, absolutely. And and, and broadly, just to set the context as, as well, Sandy, th this is going to be a historic year because from the future, we're going to look back and say, wow, that was the real pivot point, 2024, yeah. when everything started to change. I think it's a year of huge collective awakening. Um, it's going to be quite a revolutionary year in many ways, a year of excitement and possibility, a uh, lot of new opportunities. But I really would like to say to people, are you entering 2024 through the lens of fear or the lens of excitement? Because if you enter it with the lens of fear, and, oh my God, there's some horrors in the world. And indeed there are. And the world is very uncertain and unstable and I'm scared and will I keep my job? And you know, blah, blah, blah. If you enter it with the lens of fear, the way the world works, your perspective, your beliefs tend to be, uh, tend to manifest for you. They become your reality. Whereas if we enter with a lens of excitement and yeah, it's going to be a bit wild and whitewater rafting, but boy, are there going to be some amazing, amazing connections and jumps and understandings as we go through it. So I really would encourage people to set their lens, their perspective, their, their, their beliefs of how it's going to be right at the, right at the start. Um, and to have the sort of value system where you are focused on integrity, humility, kindness, compassion, love, and joy. And those are the pillars or the principles, I would say, that you need to weave your reality around in, in 2024. But it is going to be fast. And that's why I've been saying to people, practice your anchor, practice your center, close your eyes, drop into your breath. Imagine you're breathing in and out through the heart. Candle gaze, listen to the bird song. Find a dead, dead simple way where, where in seconds you can bring yourself back to your center. Learn to operate from your center, not... Mm external reality because you're going to be kind of buffeted um so we are going to be helped it is the year of the wood dragon in chinese astrology i don't know much about chinese astrology other, other than it operates on a 12-year jupiter cycle but the wood dragon is about authority sovereignty uh, leadership being a leader in your own life even if you're you're just at home um resilience and so there are going to be many many opportunities coming up in 2024. I think we're going to have quantum leaps in our consciousness all the way through. A big month, well, I think two big months for that. January is a very big month because on the 20th, Pluto re-enters Aquarius. And Aquarius is about, um, about higher mind, about galactic beings, about an understanding of the cosmos. And this is going to really expand our consciousness in a major way, expand our scientific understandings of how the world works, but also expand our consciousness, I think, very significantly. And it was interesting when I was talking to Nancy and Rebecca, and we've all been talking about going through a transformation, and, and she said, no, no, the, the, the blue beings are saying it's a metamorphosis. It's caterpillar to butterfly. It's a whole change of state. And that's why what I was seeing in the astrology was not 
just me, along with all the other astrologers, going back to the previous Pluto in Aquarius cycles, which is 248-year orbit, going back to 1200s, 1500s, late 1700s, and say it's going to be a kind of a repeat in modern times of what happened then. It isn't same old, same old. It's a quantum leap. It's a metamorphosis. And the most important thing I'd say is getting mastery of your thoughts. Because Pluto in Aquarius can manifest as control by technology of our thinking. We can see clear as day how that could happen. So you become the master. So late January, I see as, as being quite a jump. There are going to be some incredible healing technologies coming out really from now on. They're, they're already coming into our, our space and they will continue to. A big, I think one of the biggest months of the year is going to be in April. Um, because in April, two huge things happen. One is that we have a total solar eclipse that, um, and this is happening on the 8th of April, but you feel it, you know, well, you feel it up to a month before and up to six months later, that the eclipse path falls northeast to southwest across America. Now, if you go back to the total solar eclipse happening that happened in um, August 2017, it fell northwest to southeast across America. Yeah. The recent total solar eclipse we had on the 14th of October, the eclipse path fell northwest to southeast. So you've got this major cross of the eclipse paths. And the crossing point is Texas. So whether something very significant is going to happen in Texas, whether it's going to be the opening of a portal, in Texas, I don't know. We'll get more information as we get closer to that day. But that is an incredible, it's almost like an, it, it, it is an incredible, well, it, eclipses are always quantum jumps. They're like wild cards. So we always get the unexpected. And it is going to be very much about being pioneers, leaders, going solo in our lives um, with a real sense of, I know myself and I know my inner power. But that is reinforced on the 20th, 21st of April by a very powerful and positive conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus. And this is like an explosion of consciousness. This will really, I think, lift us to our multidimensionality, to much more galactic connection, galactic information. We we will become we will step back into becoming galactic galactic citizens as we have been in the past that is going to be incredibly exciting again fast moving there could be increased seismic activity but i think it's almost seismic activity in our consciousness that is the most important thing to focus on a lot of newness coming in new technologies new healing technologies there's going to be a lot around not just new social media channels, but different internets, I think. Different internets which are free, free speech. Remember that old thing we used to have? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so that will be, and it's reinforced then by Jupiter moving into Gemini for the next 12 months from May, forming a very positive aspect to Pluto, which has just moved into Aquarius. It's a trine, 120 degree aspect. This really is about multidimensionality. So we are leaving 3D and linear time behind more quickly than we can possibly imagine. Mm. Yes, Jupiter. So it's going to be expanding all of those mercurial traits, the, the, the thirst for knowledge as well as knowledge itself. And it's interesting because Jude Carrivan's um, book on, uh, I think it's The Conscious Cosmos, it's all about, she talks about information, which yes. is knowledge, yeah, coming into form. So for people who are feeling that they, they're only one small person and that they can't possibly make a difference, um, that has to change. Obviously, we've been talking about, you know, we are one consciousness. And when we realize that, even the tiniest little step that we take is valid and it's very, very important. What would you say to people like that who need a little bit more help in understanding that they 
are one consciousness, that we are one consciousness. Where would you direct them? What advice would you give them? I think, firstly, to practice going inward so they connect to something higher. Um, so that would be one thing. But also very practically, I would say try and collect, connect to like-minded people who might be just one step further down that road of understanding that it's one consciousness than, um, than you are. So uh, connect to people via groups like the People's Health, uh, People's Health Alliance, the People's Food and Farming Alliance, the Stand in the Park groups, which are global, um, any permaculture groups, anything that you may be interested in that is practical, where you can meet ideally physically face-to-face -face as opposed to just online. But even online, I mean, like many, many other people, I started this very simple 15-minute meditation, seven o'clock um 7 p.m uk time on a sunday evening just for people to connect who follow my work so it's a family frequency just for 15 minutes and and envisage new earth and envisage that we're coming together holding hands people are putting animals in there they're putting people in in war zones in the center of this circle people they know that are sick in the center of this circle people are, are having incredibly rich experiences and it, you know, sort of shattering experiences for their consciousness, just doing that 15 minutes, linking mm -hmm. it energetically, frequency-wise, no Zoom links, no notifications, you just jump on, you know, into your meditation and imagine that you're holding hands with all those people. So I definitely do that. I would read something like um, Professor Robert Temple's book, A New Science of Heaven, where he's talking about the science of this being one consciousness. Um, as somebody's work I respect enormously is, is Veda Austin, who was yes. talking about water as God consciousness, that connect, mm -hmm. water connects all of us. The water you and I are drinking, Sandy, has been drunk by millions of people before it reached us. And it just passes through us. And I think that, that's the great connector of God consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so things like that start to open our minds to go beyond separateness. Because once we go beyond separateness, we lose fear. We lose this sense of emotional isolation. And, and, exactly. we really, you know, and then it becomes a whole new wonderful world that, uh, that we can start to create together. You know, astrologically, things are moving very fast. Is there a timeline that you've looked at where you feel, yes, we're going to see a huge surge in 2024? Is there a kind of tipping point that you've identified in the next decade or two? Yeah, I think, that it, yeah, I mean, that going to be a whole series of tipping points, I think. That's why I think in 2024, because the planets like Pluto and also Jupiter are moving into air signs and increasingly the outer planets are going to move from earth and water, slow and heavy to, to fire and air, so fast. I think it's going to be a whole series of, of tipping points. 2024 I see as, as a pivotal year. We're going to see more evidence of new earth that's already here as a consciousness in 2025. 2026 is very interesting because we have Saturn and Neptune almost holding hands together, stepping onto zero degrees of Aries, the very first degree of the zodiac. And that is a whole new beginning, a whole new cycle of a whole new episode of okay, what are we going to create as leaders of our own world and our own minds and our own consciousness? So that happens in February 2026. And then from 2026 through to 2028, we have five beautiful trines, 120 degree aspects between Uranus and Pluto. And if we look back historically, they have been times of great um, creative renaissance, of blossoming for humanity. And I think going forwards to those years, it isn't going to be it isn't going to be so much art and poetry, although we may see that. It's going to be more. Um, it, it's going to be more scientific in terms of technology with which we can create our world and create our healing. So, if I'm if I'm looking down the timeline, um, we're going to have a whole series, I think, of exciting tipping points and quantum leaps through through 2024. New Earth is already here as a consciousness, and we can access that if we simply raise our frequency. Many of us are doing this all the time now. 2025 will give us more evidence of, of New Earth, more green shoots, more communities, more collaborations, etc. 2026 is very interesting because we have Saturn and Neptune 
pretty much holding hands. They are holding hands coming on to what I call the creator degrees, zero degrees of Aries together. And Neptune has a 165 year cycle. Saturn has a 29 and a half year cycle. So this is a whole new episode that they are initiating. And that's in February 2026. And then from 2026 to 2028, we have five beautiful identical trines between the planet Uranus and the planet Pluto. And when this has happened historically, it's been an incredible period of creative blossoming, sort of renaissance for humanity after hard times. I think um, for us, it can certainly be creative in terms of art and poetry and music, but it's also going to be more science-based in some way, more technological with healing, um, healing technologies, and a lot of galactic input into terms in terms of how we can raise our consciousness further to create this incredible golden age that we're that we're moving into. So that's really got huge momentum by then. But it's beginning right now. I mean we're in it right now for sure. Well, I'm back again. I apologise for that. It looks like we had a temporary outage there that took the internet down. Um, so I am currently tethered to my phone. So I hope that you can see me and hear me okay. Pam, we're almost out of time. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. I think I heartily recommend that if anybody feels they need their hand holding in the coming year, check out Pam's website. Make sure that you read her astrology, follow some of the wonderful um, advice that she's been giving us today about how we can keep our own um, frequencies high. And um, yeah, that's it. We're out of time. I came back it's just in time to say goodbye. Fantastic, Sandy. I've loved it. You asked great questions and I've, we covered different grounds. So I, I really, really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pam. That's it uh, for this week. If you want to know more about Pam's work and her books, she's written two great books. You don't really believe in astrology, do you? And how to co-create using the secret language of the universe, which focuses on your soul's path, soul's path in this, your path of destiny, which is really important for you to know, especially at this time. And you can find those books at Pam's website and also on Amazon. And you can also sign up for her newsletter or not sign up because you don't get it mailed, but you can read her newsletter and watch her videos, her presentations, and also get your chart done if you want. That's it. Uh, the next step dot uk dot com is Pam's uh, website address. Or Pam uh, apologies Gregory. again for the empty. Or Pam Gregory dot com. Pam Gregory dot com. Oh, yeah. Pam Gregory dot com. Yes, of course. Absolutely. Um, okay, that's all we have time for. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer. Thanks for joining us today. I'll be back again at the same time next week with another edition of What Is Going On. Till then, it's goodbye from me and thank you again to Pam. Much love. Thank you, Sandy.